Hi, this is Fide Master Ingvar Johansson from Iceland and I'm bringing you more games from the Alpha Zero against Stockfish match. Now most of the games will be wins by Alpha Zero because well it's it's unreal and it smashed Stockfish basically in the match. But in this game, some revenge for Stockfish. And we're going to see one of the very few games that Stockfish actually won. And this one is from the portion where they played a set position, set opening from the uh, TCEC, Top uh, Chess Engine Competition. They have certain positions that you play with white and black. And we'll just get into it and see what the position is. So Stockfish had the white pieces, Alpha Zero the black pieces. And we have the French defense, E4 and E6. Now from the games where uh, the opening is not predetermined, like in this game, Alpha Zero tends to prefer E5, and I think sometimes E5, but mostly E5. So it prefers the Berlin actually, but it plays it more dynamically and even, even plays it for a wins uh, in some games. So okay, E4, E6, uh, D4, D5, the French defense, Knight C3, the main line, Knight F6, the classical, and we have Bishop of G5. Here black can take on e4, going for the Rubinstein or the Berlin variation, even the fourth Knox. Uh, you can go for bishop to b4, which is uh, the McCutcheon, if I recall correctly, and in this game we see bishop to e7. e5 by white, classical French play, grabbing the center here. Knight after d7, so black is slightly cramped, but has a very solid position. But here we see the Alekine Shatart attack. Uh, the fourth world champion Alexander Alekhine played this well at least three times, uh, once in a tournament game, twice in a simul. A famous game, uh, a very nice miniature he played uh, in the tournament game. And it went exactly like the book here, Bishop takes g5. I think modern players would prefer to play h6 here for black, which seems like the most solid option and is what scores best for black. But bishop takes g5 was uh, what we saw in the game. H takes g5, queen takes, and now knight to h3. So white has sacrificed a pawn, he doesn't have a, an h pawn anymore. But for that we have the open h file and some leading development. Uh, we got this knight out with tempo on the queen, it can come to f4 from where it can jump to h5. You know, hit some squares, it can come to g5 as well. The bishop is ready to come out, and meanwhile black has, yeah, a little bit... Uh, He's lacking a bit in development on the queen side. So the queen goes back to e7. And this is where the book actually ends. So here is where the actual game starts. And they played a game each from, from this position. Uh, some of these positions from the TCEC uh, competition are a bit unbalanced. And this is actually one of them. And the computer is assessing this as close to plus one for white. And this game seems to support that, that theory. And I very much doubt that uh, this line for black with uh, bishop takes g5 will find many followers after this. So queen g4, this looks very forced. You're attacking the pawn on uh, g7. g6 is the most common move. f5 can be played as well. Uh, seems a bit weakening and yeah, scores well for white, but g6 was played. Now knight to g5. Now we have exchanged the black squared bishops, so you know these holes might become a problem for black. Black plays h6, uh, h5 looks like an option as well. Uh, because, well, eventually it seems like you have to play it, but h6 was played here. And now. Uh, Stockfish castled here. Queenside castled. In the uh, Alpha Zero against Stockfish game, Alpha Zero went to bishop to d3. Uh, it ended up after bishop d3, at some stage, sacrificing a knight here and then taking with a bishop on g6. Got a very promising position, but Stockfish defended very well and managed to draw that game despite 
the disadvantage. But in this one, perhaps Stockfish played it better. It castled. And now, well, with this uh, backwards development, we have to get something out. And back goes with the knight, knight to c6. Yeah, the problem with a break like, like c5, you can't really do it just yet because we can play knight to b5 and this square is a huge problem for black. So black, you know, tries to get some pieces out, knight to c6. But this is met with knight to b5, natural move hitting uh, the pawn here. And we don't want to, <laughs> you know, move the king to protect it. Uh, you don't want to uh, retreat with the queen. Move like this might even open up opportunities of just taking here immediately, which seems very bad for black. So knight b6, opening up for the queen to protect here on c7. And now, uh, yeah, we still don't have a novelty, but a strong move, which had been played before by uh, Jimenez Polito, a 23-30 player, rook to d3, and a very logical move. This rook simply wants to. Swing over where it's needed, be it on the F file or be it on the uh, H file, adding pressure here on the pawn. Of course, black can't take here on, on G5, either with the queen or, or with the pawn, because we, we have a pin here on the rook. So H5 was played here. And now rook to F3. Attack on F7 with the knight and the rook. So how do we deal with that? Uh, in the game, black played a6. So this does allow uh, white to take on f7. But uh, that's not what Stockfish did. He played queen to uh, g3. If we take on f7. Queen takes f7, knight takes f7, hg, and now we have a problem, because if we take on h8, there's king takes f7, and we're actually down a piece. So after a6, uh, Stock was just prepared to take on f7, and played queen to uh, g3. Now this on the other hand means that we're threatening to take on f7. So knight d8 was played. Let's see what happens if uh, a takes b5. If black takes on b5, we now take on f7. And despite black having, I mean both sides have a rook and a bishop. So black basically has two knights and a rook for the queen. Which in some cases and usually is enough for the queen, but here the main problem is that the black king is just so exposed. Uh, the queen will quickly find a nice square on f6. We can use the rook on, on uh, h1 in conjunction with g4. Opening up lines and this will not be a pleasant experience for black. So alpha 0 plays knight to d8, protecting f7. But this just shows how, how difficult the starting position of this line is that black still hasn't solved the problem. Of, of its development has a very backward pieces and even here I mean what do you do you want to castle but how do you like untangle your pieces you kind of have to play bishop d7 and and uh, knight back to c6 but the knight is stuck covering this pawn so this just looks like a very bad position for for black stockfish uh, alpha zero excuse me went with knight to d7 stockfish developed its last piece bishop to d3 Knight f8, trying to bring some uh, reinforcements to the king side where white is attacking. But Stockfish just kept on uh, adding the pressure, rook to h4. This rook might swing over to f4, attacking f7. Rook g8, perhaps preparing to meet that idea to protect the pawn. But now, white has, you know, developed all the pieces, the pieces are active. Uh, he's attacking. Black has very many passive pieces, so it seems like this would be the moment to strike, and that's indeed what Stockfish does, and it's very good in positions where you have like concrete ca uh, calculations or, or a concrete attack, and it will not fail in these positions, and a very nice and strong move here, bishop to c4, 
putting the bishop on pre can't be captured but if you capture it you're going to lose alpha zero played queen d7 but d takes c4 is met with d5 just giving up a piece and then crashing through with the pawns and this is very nice i mean black is almost in suk song i mean what to do a very funny line is okay i need to get to a bishop d7 but no i would push the pawn when you're queen hmm. yeah it's a very funny line the queen is just trapped what, what to do um yeah and if you take uh, he takes d5 knight takes d5 big check landing on f6 with uh the rook hanging so nothing to be done there so queen d7 and now another nice move the bishop is uh is uh under attack on c4 so why not put another piece under attack so a strong pawn on d5 seemingly attacking two pieces but to no avail there's a big check coming in on f6 so even if you take which alpha zero did we take with a knight and how do you deal with this well knight h7 looks like an idea that's what alpha zero did but after rook takes h5 we have resignation you know other moves like king e7 don't do anything queen c5 check king has to go back and then the knight jumps in so yeah knight h7 but rook to h5 forced resignation in the station what to do not much uh we have this pin here you can't take i will take here and if you go back we give the check if you go to e7 well i, I can do many things uh, including taking here but uh there might be even something stronger even knight f6 immediately might be uh, a strong move here but i mean just taking i mean you're not even done material and the attack continues uh yeah and just a big threat of uh taking here and then giving a check on f6 so alpha zero resigned and i believe i haven't checked all the games but i think it's almost impossible that this isn't the shortest game in the match only 22 moves stunning and yeah, I guess in Alpha Zero's defense, I think it shows that the starting position of this line is very much in favor of White and Stockfish took full advantage of that. So yeah, uh, yeah, we had to fight back for Stockfish, I guess. Uh, you know, show one of the few wins that it had. Uh, you know, some of some of you were asking for it, and well, you got it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.